Terminator 2 won four Academy Awards for special effects, and it was T2's use of computer-generated imaging that established a new benchmark for special effects. The computer animators at ILM had the monumental task of generating more than 40 different shots of computer images. A crew of 50 visual effects artists worked for the better part of a year to complete the film. For the artists at Industrial Light and Magic, all those hours at the computer terminal had paid off. Here's Dennis Murin. The entire T2 project was the most challenging project I've ever worked on. There were so many things that had to come together on that show for it to work. Uh, one is we had to figure out how we could just digitize film so we could do all the, the digital work we needed to do in the middle, all the software uh, you know, generation of images and all, and then get it back on film. That was a major hurdle. Previously, we'd done like you know, four shots in Back to the Future 2, and we'd done a couple of shots in The Abyss. But to think we could do 45 shots with a deadline was a big deal. So it took a lot of figuring out of stuff. And I actually took a year off work to kind of, for T2, to actually kind of see if this was an avenue that I felt I wanted to pursue, this digital technology, or whether we should you know, put it on the back burner for five years and let other people figure it out. <laughs> This scene required a complex combination of live-action footage and computer-generated images. ILM Steve Williams. One of the biggest problems in Terminator was to try and give an illusion of plasticity. So pieces of them, of geometry, were falling off them, yet it was totally smooth and not showing any uh, hard-cut lines. And computer graphics, if treated wrong, will show very, very hard edges. And on film, you know, it just looks like a scrape on a car. So, um... We, we did a lot, what we call a technique called ray sampling, where we take a patch of geometry and fire it against the two areas that are broken, and it creates a nice smooth fillet in between them. There's another neat one in Terminator where there was a problem of taking somebody and passing his head through bars, right, in that one shot where Robert walks through the bars. But, I mean, I even heard one guy sitting behind me going, you know, I know they did that shot, they did it using jelly. In fact, it wasn't, but it was supposed to create the illusion of that. So, element one, Robert walking in that scene. We extract the data of the camera so we know exactly the camera angle. Element two, a set of bars, computer generated, sitting there. Okay, so we make computer-generated bars. And the third element, we take um, our, our synthetic digital stunt double of Robert, and we rotoscope him to the first element of Robert walking. Then we pass the digital one of Robert through the bars. In using this technique called collision detection, it creates a nice little disturbance around the bars and looks like putty passing through, or a fork passing through putty. Um, then we take frame for frame of the first element of Robert and project it against the result and it creates the illusion of the uh, putty appearance. On Terminator 2, my job was up front to actually build a computer-generated man, Robert Patrick. So we had Robert come up here, we painted a grid on him, and um, we shot him on the back lot, and I used that information, that actual film, to study his motion and actually construct a man. We took a set of his actual images and put bones on those images and ha animated the bones walking, then built skin over top of that, so that was the second stage. So we were studying his motion, and um, in order to ha have Robert's body animate, we had 30 channels, approximately. Different channels that control, like the leg moving and the foot moving and, and, and uh, the hands moving. And uh, the, I guess the litmus test was sort of um, the part where he's walking out of the fire, which kind of tested his invincibility. Probably the most exciting combination of stunt work and computer imagery can be found in this sequence. There's a scene when Robert Patrick, playing the T-1000 robot, races out of a building on a motorcycle and jumps under the helicopter. 
and smashes his head through the through the uh, the glass of the helicopter, the bubble on it, and then melts into the through the smaller hole that he's made uh, as the polyalloy liquid, and then goes into the seat and reconstructs himself into the shape of the policeman again. And those were done through a series of things, one of which we shot Robert for one of the shots, sticking his head actually through the glass, and then we we stretched the image. We pulled the image and stretched it into a blob shape and mapped that from the computer over a three-dimensional shape of a blob pushing through and then blended the two together so it appeared as though his face was stretching and then it turned into the chrome and moved on through. And the following couple of shots we did uh, has got a, a typical computer graphic sort of animation of a shape going down as a blob into a seat and then forming up into a person again. And then that, the way we did the entire show is then that shape is then we call mapped with reflections uh, that were actually in the helicopter that we shot when we were shooting the show, just still photograph views of all the different areas, uh, looking forward, back, top, bottom, right, and left. Those reflections then are are just taken with a still camera, which are scanned into the computer also, and what we call mapped onto this geometry that we've made. This is what makes these characters look like the chrome, as opposed to a, a typical computer graphic logo of a you know a certain you know Friday night movie or something like that you might see. Instead of it looking like plastic or like wood that a lot of computer graphics says, we've mapped on the reflections so this thing looks like it's a chrome shape. That's a wrap. See you all next time on Hollywood Effects Masters.